Hello and welcome to the Red 78, a Munster podcast for Munster fans. Coming up on this week's show, a big win in Wales as Munster rim in six tries against the Scarlets. Orgy is back. Was he any good? And plenty more as well to come on this week's episode of the Red 78. I'm Rory O'Hagan from Off the Ball, joined by Munster legends Alan Quinlan and Fiona Hayes. Guys, how are you? We're good. Well, I am anyway. Quinny looks like he's uh, beaming in the corner there, so I'd say he'd had a grand, relaxing weekend, have you? Uh, no, very good. I was uh, watching a lot of sport, watching a lot of rugby, yeah. Um, did the Munster game Friday night, and um, yeah, it was good. Very enjoyable weekend. Liverpool won against Brentford as well. Uh, so that was good, yeah. So, yeah, it's a break weekend in the Six Nations, but it was good to see Munster back. I think overall, I, I, I there's a, there was a fair bit of rust out of many teams at the weekend mm. after having a break of six weeks from the URC. Obviously, a lot of them would have played in European games, mm. but um, not with the same players. So, yeah, a little bit of rust at the weekend, but uh, thankfully we can talk about a Munster win this week. Uh, anyway, mm. and, uh, Liverpool and are like Munster with the injury list, aren't they? Oh, Josh, that's huge. That's going to be a huge one. We'll turn away uh, Munster Manchester United fans if we keep talking about <laughs> Liverpool. So apologies to the Munster Man United fans. I have many friends who are United fans, so they remind me when Liverpool lose and United win <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. So anyway... Yeah, four wins from four from Man United in the league now, just saying. Uh, all right, <laughs> let's get Oh, yeah, this. forgot. You were one of them as well, of course. One yeah. of them. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's get on to the Scarlets and Munster game. Um, yeah, Munster first two seven, a lot to talk about. But uh, first, people have been uh, sending in their comments, Fiona, generally positive and happy with the result. Yeah, look, there was um, a good uh, take up today or in the last couple of days on the comments and a lot of it, as you said, is positive. And look, we can't read out everyone's comment, but we are reading it and we appreciate you sending them in. Um, what I think the majority was kind of about Joey Carberry and Snyman, and I'll go through a, a few here. Um, Dan Roberts said, Joey is playing some great rugby right now. Do you think Ireland and the, Mo- and the Munster coaching staff last year cast him aside too soon? Um, do you want to have a quick chat in that, Quinny? Or oh, I don't know. It's a tough one. Yeah. Um, look, it's difficult. We don't know what goes on behind the scenes, and it was similar to the Ben Healy stuff. Um, when he left, it was um a great situation. If you still had, you know, Jack Crowley, Ben Healy, and Joey Carberry going forward, but it's players, I suppose, getting frustrated, looking for opportunities, and looking at um where they go, where they sit in the pecking order. So. I don't think this, you know, I don't think the Joey, Joey Carberry one was is is one that can be, you know, you can't blame Munster for that. I think they would have certainly wanted to keep him, but because he's probably coming off um, a decent IRFU few contracts um, and bigger money, mm-hmm. and he's fallen down the pecking order a little bit. It's difficult for Munster to probably justify. When he's not first choice, you know, when you think a few years ago, it wasn't that long ago, we were kind of uh, lamenting the fact that Joey Carberry wasn't available for certain games. You know, it's 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 such a shame the way I suppose things have happened in the last 12 to 18 months for Joey. Um, the injuries haven't helped at all. He's yeah. still a top quality mm-hmm. player and he showed that at the weekend. So to answer the question, I don't think Munster... What more could they have done? I think the writing was on the wall when he was left out of Irish squads and that's when when things started to become difficult. Um, ben Healy was made an offer as well at the time, mm-hmm. but he's probably made a bigger offer and a bit better opportunity that he sought to go and play for Scotland. So sometimes these things are very multi-layered and difficult, um, but it's Munster who will end up kind of bare in, in, in the 10 situation, which is which is a pity. Yeah, and um, look, Liam Mead had very happy with the win, patchy in parts, especially in the middle 30, but we had a comprehensive win. Good to see a Hearn and RG combining for the tallest second row of all time. Um, Paddy um, said Scannell, a Hearn and Snyman showed early signs of real promise. As we see with the Ireland line-out, it's vital same in the scrum with Jaeger, Lachman and Scallon looking strong. We were poor in part, but the set piece looked promising and a bonus Joey's back. Um, Philip uh, Quinlan, the goose and stood up on a, a manky even in Wales and superb to see Joey, Joey doing well, but be must be very different playing without the lads at camp. 
And also I have to, this is a, an interesting one, I suppose Ned O'Donnell said, why did it take a scarlet try to get the monster get the monster lads to up their game. The, the delay in joining the lineouts is really annoying, breaking the mind, momentum of the game. It's happening in every game these days, and World Rugby must do something about it. Have you any take on that, Quinny? Uh, well, just on that, I think there's um, there's there was a piece Stephen Jones did in the Sunday Times mm-hmm. at the weekend about, and um, this is something that's cropped up about um, lineouts and and stopping and big debates about calls and all this kind of stuff. Um, and he did a piece on Sunday. There was also some other um, English journalists have been writing and talking about this. Um, something, yeah, they need to, there's talks of a 30 second kind of mm-hmm. window there to get in, form your lineup and get the ball in. Um, there was a little bit of that at the weekend. Um, I think lineups have become overcomplicated. Um, I think we, in Ireland at times have overcomplicated lineouts. Munster have certainly overcomplicated lineouts at times. Go back to that game in Galway, uh, the first of January, and the movement and the slowness of the ball coming in. So um you have to have some movement and some kind of variety to your lineouts, but there is a lot of debate going on around it. I think yes, they do need to be um uh the speed needs to be increased around lineouts. Um but going back to Scannell there, I think Niall Scannell's throne has been superb. Mm-hmm. We lost two lineouts in the second half when we were in attacking positions, two in a row, one on either side of the field, maybe around the 22. And I think that frustrated me. And um, after what was a very good set piece now for Munster, which they've struggled in, the, in their troubles in previous times around lineout and scrum, um, but overall, I think, look, you know, it is something that needs to happen. The lineup needs to be a bit snappier right across the board. Yeah. Um, and we'll finish on Tom Lonergan. Gav and Thomas were literally monster joints, heads and shoulders above the rest. Um, uh, team was switched to get go. Zebra, Ospreys and Cardiff now in the block. Three wins needed before we go to South Africa after the hunt. I knew at Northampton, no fear, all very winnable. Yeah, so certainly a lot of positivity coming from Munster fans into us uh, on the Red 78 today. Six tries, Fiona Hayes, that Munster ran in. But as one of the texters mentioned there, Munster didn't really kind of get going until Scarlett scored that try. It seemed to spark them into life. Yeah, look, when I went and I watched back the game, you know, I, I actually went out and I watched it. I enjoyed it out, had a couple of points, but I watched it at home back and I hadn't realised that, you know, it was only, it was so tight. Uh, 61 minutes, I think, Munster got that. Um, It was 7-4, it was 7-14 up to that. And mm. with all the possession Munster had, it was, it was crazy and it really, it really didn't kind of kick in, I suppose, till they ground out the Scarlets. Look... I feel like any team at home, I know it was sloppy, but any team at home, you have to travel over there. You know, they, they, they're they fans in, in the crowd. It takes a little bit of time, but what would really frustrate Roundtree, I suppose, is after those two tries that we saw and really good, tight pick and go tries, I thought the, the variety around that was really good, especially, you know, that pop back inside to Gavin coming around the corner. They just didn't seem to be clicking, I suppose, in backline and attack in particular at times. I thought it was a little bit sloppy. And that's something we've been praising in, in the last few games. Frisch and Nankable, I, I felt like a couple of times their connections were off and how they went about their business. But once they got that third try, I think it just everything started to click into place. And, and it was really good to watch. Mm-hmm. And to be fair, you have to respect Scarlets as well. They're, they weren't great, let's be honest. But as I said, when you're going away from home, it takes time to grind down a team and Munster stuck it in. Going in at half time, you know, as a coach, you probably would have been really disappointed. But I, I feel like the fact that they came out and that 61st minute and once they got that third try, it just kind of rolled into place and they were able to kick on again and they create a little bit more space. Graham Roundtree, when he wasn't too happy afterwards, he said that uh, we lost our way a bit. We tried to be a bit too fancy in the second quarter. Half time was about to stick to the process and the plan. But we were a bit disjointed in the third quarter. Did they look disjointed to you? A little bit, yeah, for sure. I think um, I think the evolution of this group and team and, and, and game plan, um, they need to kind of pick... Uh, to be able to vary things a little bit better than what they're doing. I think the big positive 
since Graham took over and Mike Prendergast came in and um, particularly around attack has been, you know, that's been a really positive mm. um, situation for Munster, their attack. We know that they have uh, that ability and that ambition to do that. I think at times the other night, um, and they did it really well at the start because they get two early tries and it's yeah. a direct approach. Um, they play down the line. Uh, they use their power, their patience to get two tries. Uh, brilliant situation for you away from home. But I think then they did try to overplay and they were a little bit. Let's be honest about it here. The players themselves, I think, weren't at their kind of high pitch, emotional, desperate selves. That, so, that sometimes you don't need to be, sometimes you need to be. They didn't need to be. I think if they were more accurate and ruthless, they certainly would have scored a couple of more tries and finished off um, situations that um, that broke down. So I would say, yes, they were quite sloppy at times and not kind of firing with full aggression and intensity that they, as I said, look, it turned out they didn't need to. Mm. Scarlets were really poor and it's a sad kind of situation. You know, I played against many Scarlets teams over the years and it was always a hell of a battle and a really tough place to go to Wales um, with any of the regions there they have their own troubles and strife financially around you know how they can run the regions and all that kind of stuff so it's it's very sad to see that um, and I think there was a it was non-negotiable that Munster go there and get a bonus point win mm -hmm. something that we're I think that's the first time ever I said Munster have to get a bonus point win here Um. We got a brilliant bonus point win there two and a half years ago, the, the day R.G. Snyman injured his knee for the second time on his comeback. That was a brilliant performance. Um, but I just think this one was, you know, let's be realistic here. If once or don't get a bonus point win here, it's, it's seen as a disappointing result. And that just goes to show where, unfortunately, the Scarlets are at the moment. You know, they're down to 14th in the league now. They've lost eight games. They've won two games this year against Cardiff home and away. And so it's really tough and it's sad to see it. Um, there was some very good players in that Scarlet side. And I think um, they made it difficult at times for Munster. So how did they make it difficult? Well, they were abrasive and aggressive and really intense in their tackling mm -hmm. and their work rate. Um, so, yeah, some part of me thinks then that maybe Munster were just... Uh, are we being a bit too critical here? Because on paper, I think... It was a very strong monster side, and but I was a bit disappointed with 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 a couple of things the way it broke down, a couple of sloppy passes, um, a little bit passive at times in defence. You know, monster yeah. missed uh, twenty three tackles. Like I mean, that's, that's the official one on U on URC um, stats, and then there's another one that says twenty eight, twenty nine. So it's 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 high anyway, and. Um, I think when, when we're kind of running to this period of time where there's a need for Munster to win matches, to get into the playoffs and challenge again, possibly to try and win the URC with a couple of pl more players back, I think, and drier conditions and their attack, getting the fluidity back in their attack, they're going to be a difficult side for, for anyone if they get people back. But I just think there's a little bit of a ruthlessness that was missing the other night and it is understandable I've been out in the field in those situations before where you're expected mm. to win you're going to win and you don't need to be at your best um, it sounds very uh, disrespectful to the Scarlets but that that's the reality looking back on it um, but the end was good the last mm. 20 minutes as Fiona said you know you get four tries uh, in the last 20 minutes of the game and I thought that's where in fairness, credit to them. They showed patience and the impact off the bench was really good, I thought. Um, and they were more accurate in, in what they were doing. Scarlet's tired a little bit and lost a little bit of their punch. So, you know, overall, at the end of it, it's a very positive scenario that you're getting five points away from home. If you're nitpicking, you know, the, the defensive stuff, couple of lineouts, uh, in the second mm. half, when it was that frustrating period, Anton Frisch missed miss tackle for the try um, on, on Joe Roberts, who showed great pace. Like, let's be fair, it's it's very unlike Anton Frisch to, to kind of 
missed that tackle because he's re- he's a really good defender. To be fair to him, um, but I, just I think, think he, it- I think Quiddy on that he could blame Lankville as well because he was still almost he was that kind of whose channel is he in, isn't it? Yeah, moment yeah, yeah. it was between it, the two of them. Also, that that, that line out throw was never ever ever straight in a million years, was it? No. Probably not, but uh, um, again, if it's if it's a tight game, we're talking about that a bit more. Yeah. Um, look, there was so much stop start in this game as well, and to mm. be fair, the referee is trying to tell people hurry up all the time. Um, look, it was it was uh, overall positive scenario to get in, get five points, get out. But if they're, you know, if they want to challenge and. Um, go on a run in the business end of the season, they've got to be a little bit more ruthless and accurate of what they're doing. They'll know that. So I think, mm. in summary, I think at times we're trying to run around Scarlets um, when they were... And I know that ambition to attack is really positive thing because we give probably, before this current coach is set up, we probably give three or four years frustrated that we're not actually being more ambitious in attack. Mm. Now we have that ambition. But I just think we need to get the balance sometimes, making hard carries, making hard carries off nine, off ten, um, and you know, softening up that opposition defense a little bit. And I just think we tried to, you know, shift on the passes a lot the other night in that frustrating period, probably from around 25 minutes onwards to up to that 60 minute period point. Um, so that's something they need to they can look mm. at themselves. The set piece was really strong around the scrum, mm. and that was brilliant to see. I think Ali Yeager, um, you know, again, more matches he plays, having Scannell back, we were bare in the hooker position. He's a big bonus to have him back in Jeremy Lockman. They were very strong there. Um, RG Snyman and, and Tom O'Hearn in the second row, um, even though RG was down every five minutes with <laughs> I know. problems with his fingers, <laughs> problem at cutting his head. Um, anyway, eventually he 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 did go off, but um, no, very positive I think overall. But the nitpicking part is they need to be a little bit more ruthless and understand the tempo of of when to kind of be di- a little bit more direct. And just on Norgie Snyman, Fiona, a lot of um talk about him in the build up to the game. He played fifty three minutes the other night. I saw him included in a, a couple of teams of the week over the weekend. What was your mm. take on his performance? Yeah, look, I was delighted. To- to, to see him back and obviously when I watched it to the second time I was able to fast forward when, whenever he had to stop and fix his finger or he got split open as well to be fair to him look he's just so exciting to watch I mean Munster had nine offloads he had four of them he's always trying to get his hands free throughout the game you can see him trying to link up with people and just even looking at the line out um, obviously there was a couple of missed throws but it just seems so easy when himself and Tom O'Hearn are in it. They're, they're so high above everyone else. The lift is on point. The jump is on point. And his control around that area, you could see it. So I think it was a really good outing for him to to come back in. Obviously, as I said, a few niggles, but that always happens when you come back for, for that first game. But I think he'd be very happy with his performance. And to be fair, when he got split open, he could have gone off and, and, and you know, someone else could have come on. But he wanted to get it sewn up, came back in. And as I said, just a delight to watch around the play. I know we talked talk about his line out but his link up play and how he gets himself to, involved in, in these things is absolutely brilliant to watch if you just follow him around the pitch he's constantly chatting constantly trying to get the hands free and those offloads are magical at times yeah to himself and Tom O'Hearn when he's like both 6-9 both absolute giants in that lineup wants to win 85% of their lineups but a, a fantastic combination it appears to be like that O'Hearn Snyman combination yeah, um, of course, RG's Snyman is not going to be match fit. Um, he hasn't played since the last time he played was the World Cup final. So that was uh, happy memories for him. But he needs matches, and I think he's really important. And hopefully he can contribute to Munster uh, between now and the end of the season because, look, he's a world-class player. And um, yeah, great to see Thomas Ahern back showing mm. his athleticism. I think I, you know, a lot of what I was speaking about in the last year or two about Thomas Ahern was running matches, getting a battle hard and getting games, improving his physical presence, particularly in around malls and the tight areas. And um, you know, his big strength is he's so athletic and quick, and he showed that again with another brilliant try. Mm. Great work from Sean O'Brien and um, you know, to 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 make that break in the outside. But um, yeah, it's brilliant. I think, you know, the 
a scenario here of getting players back. And we know that Munster went through a really tough period in December, January, um, end of November with injuries. And it's all it's all to do with power and the physical side of the game. So having players back with a bit of size and physicality will help that whole area. And um, hopefully they can stay fit. And as I said, um, you know, they can be really big players for Munster. Um, you know, having Jaeger in as well and, mm. and him getting kind of match fit. And as I said, Niall Scannell back. Um, Gavin Coombs is playing really well. Hopefully John Hodnett can come back in a few weeks. These are all positive things. Everybody has injuries, but it's that kind of depth, deep, deep depth that's not there in the, in the Munster scenario. For So if they get a little bit of luck with the injuries and get players back and... You know, the obvious part, as we spoke about it last week, we're going to mention it again, is get a run of wins here in these, ne these next block of matches. Um, they can get up and get into the playoffs and start believing that um, they can have a crack at it.